Before we get started with today's video, I just want to take you through the structure of this particular series. Um, so we've actually partnered with Linode to bring you this series. Uh, this series will involve two parts. So if you head over to linode.com under events, you should find the Hackersploit uh, Linode Live Linux Server Security Series, and you can just click on more info here. So uh, this series is going to be a 12 part series on how to set up, secure and audit Linux servers. Uh, and will begin on um, the 1st of October. Uh, and the first series will be available on YouTube and will include SSH security essentials, configuring sudo access, securing Apache 2, securing Nginx, and uh, the uncomplicated firewall. Uh, the second part of the series will be hosted on Linode Live, and it's absolutely free. You don't have to pay anything. Um, and again, you can access, uh, you can actually register for that there. This is going to be an advanced series that will build up uh, or build off the first series and will cover things like brute force protection, IP tables, uh, uh, WordPress security and security auditing on Linux with uh, the Linux tool. Um, so to access that, just click on the registration link uh, on uh, on the ON24 platform, and that'll take you here. So that'll give you an idea of all the various webcasts and when they're going to be posted. And it'll give you a summary of what will be covered exactly. These are advanced uh, webcasts that will be about 40 minutes, and you can register for them absolutely free of charge. Uh, we've also uh, partnered with Linode to give you guys a free credit. Uh, so again, if you are interested in using Linode uh, for your vir virtual private server or for your hosting, whether you're a developer or a administrator, uh, you can get $100 of 90 day credit. Uh, and th this is for new accounts. Um, so that's fantastic. Definitely do take advantage of this if you're getting started with Linux or you're actually following, uh, you're following along with this series. However, make sure to actually redeem this offer or this code, uh, which is under promo.lindo.com uh, and the code is hackersploit100. Uh, this offer will only be limited till the 15th of December, so definitely check that out. That being said, let's get started with today's video. Hey guys, Hackersploit here, back again with another video. Welcome back to the Linux security series. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to secure, how to set up and secure Nginx. Now, Nginx and Apache are very similar, but again, uh, slightly different in terms of their the way they're designed and the way they work. Apache is much more success is much more popular. Uh, I was about to say successful, but it's much more popular, much more widely adopted than Nginx. Uh, Nginx is uh, more of an upcoming. Uh, piece of technology that again is getting a lot of uh, is, is gaining a lot of traction and momentum so again it's it's worthwhile to know how nginx works how to configure it and how to secure uh, nginx you know uh, you know from basic security misconfigurations and then of course as i mentioned we'll be talking about uh, web application firewalls like uh, mod security and how they can be uh, in integrated with nginx and apache in the next videos. These videos are just focusing on getting Nginx up and running and ensuring that it's as secure as possible right out of the box. That being said, our WordPress server that we set up was using the LAMP stack, so it's using Apache by default. Uh, that means we're gonna have to create uh, our own Linode uh, and uh, we'll just set up a quick Linode here and uh, we'll install Nginx manually. So for our base operating system, I'll just um, I'll just use Ubuntu by default, Ubuntu 20.04. For the region, we can stick with Atlanta, and for the um, the actual plan, I'll stick with a Nanode. That's perfectly fine, and we'll just call this Nginx um, Security, right? And I'll specify a root password. Again, we're just creating another uh, Linode, uh, you know, so where I can actually demonstrate how to install it, how to configure it, because Nginx. Uh, needs a bit of configuration uh, right uh, as soon as you install it. So we'll just hit create here. And I'm just going to let this uh, create the, um, well, it's going to start provisioning the Linode for us. And then after it's done that, we can get started with installing um, Nginx. We'll also take a look at how to set up, uh, you know, authentication using uh, username and password, similar to what we did uh, with Apache. So I'm just going to let this boot up. All right, so our Linode is created and I'll just copy the IP right over here and uh, we'll try and log in uh, via SSH. So I'll just say um, SSH and we say root. Specify the IP address right over here. It's going to ask us to add it to the known hosts. We'll do that. Specify the password I had set earlier and uh, we should be able to log in. There we are. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to install Nginx. And uh, we'll also install the Apache 2 utilities, which uh, will allow us to create uh, or to use the HD password 
uh, utility. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to say sudo uh, apt install or apt update. First of all, we'll update our repositories and then we say um, apt install. We'll say uh, we'll just say uh, nginx and we then specify Apache to utils and uh, that's very simple to install as well. And we're just going to let this run. Um, so what we're going to do now uh, after we set up the installation, I'm just going to explain to you how uh, Nginx works, the default directory and the default configuration file. So again, we're just going to let this complete installing. Uh, it shouldn't take too much time uh, at all. After it's completed installing, I'll enable the service so it runs on startup and then we'll start the Nginx service. So to enable the service, we'll just say system control enable Nginx like so and that's going to start this uh, it's going to enable it we then want to start the service right so we're going to say start nginx and uh, you can see it's going to tell you uh, wait we need to actually correct that so it's nginx there we are and we can then check the status um, and the status tells us that uh, it's active and running so we can actually test this out and see whether nginx is currently running on the ip so if we paste this and hit go you can see it tells us welcome to nginx if you see this page uh, the nginx web server is or the nginx web server is successfully installed and working further configuration is required so the thing uh, the the important thing to understand about nginx is that you need to work with the configuration quite a bit uh, to specify exactly uh, how you want your environment so uh, by default, uh, the, the the default directory as to where you'll be storing your web applications or your HTML files um, will be under uh, var www.html. So that is the uh, the actual default directory, and you can actually see we have the index uh, nginx uh, debian html file, which is this file currently being displayed. So for example. Uh, I can remove the file and again it would change and I would then be able to access uh, I would then not be able to access any particular file on the server. Um, that being said, as I said earlier on, Nginx is very similar to Apache in that uh, firstly the configuration file uh, it, it lies within the Etsy folder but that's uh, that's the same of almost all Linux utilities and of course if I say vim Etsy Nginx and we then look for the nginx.conf file and I open that up, uh, you can see there's a, a ton of options that we need to configure here. Now, uh, by default, uh, nginx will work with the default configuration that you can see right now and you can use it that way, but that's not recommended. The, the first thing we want to do is uh, we want to go uh, all the way to the bottom and get rid of the mail section. Uh, because we don't need that uh, at the moment. So I'll just uh, get rid of that. I'll specify the visual mode and I'll hit delete because we don't need that. And also get rid of the virtual host configs here. And of course, if you're going to use your own virtual host configurations, you can do that. I'll be configuring mine here. So that's just going to specify include etsy nginx conf.t. And yeah, so we'll just get rid of that. Or you can just comment them if you don't want to use them right now. Uh, now the thing about nginx is we need to specify our server, uh, we need to specify the server option and the actual directory. Now the way we do this is um, if we just scroll all the way to the top here, you can see nginx sorts it out uh, into HTTP. So that's the service. We know this is a web server, so it's using HTTP. Uh, we then specify the server and then the server options and then after that we specify the location similar to the directory on apache so the best way to explain this is to actually just take you through it so uh, all uh, these are all the options that you can configure regarding ssl logging options gzip etc etc we'll take a look at the virtual host configs and we're going to go all the way to the bottom of it here and this is where we add our server our server option so we say server and we use two curly braces and open that up uh, like so so i'll just um, we'll just indent that and you want to make sure that you indent uh, your code so that it matches it um, right so the first option we need to provide within the server configuration is the port we want nginx to listen on so by default this is we can say that is with the option name is listen and then we use the tab option and we then specify the port so for example right now nginx is currently using port 80 i can also specify port 8080 if i want uh, but for now let's leave it to port 80 and then the second option we can specify is the server name so we say server name is going to be localhost and we'll just leave the the default settings as they are 
So uh, that is pretty much what is uh, kept or that is pretty much the de facto option there. We then provide the location, which is where we specify our root uh, directory that we want to that we want to use as opposed to the default one. And to do this, I'll uh, just indent right over here and we then say location. Right. And then we use two curly braces as well, because this is uh, where we specify uh, the location. So I'll just indent that as well. And then within the location, we specify the uh, the root directory. So the root directory is going to be var um, uh, dub dub dub, sorry, uh, var dub 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 HTML. And uh, I'll just say HTML, there we are. And we use the semicolon to terminate that command there. And we can also specify the location here. So var dub 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 HTML so that we know uh, what directory this is referencing to. Um, so that is the location. Now we can actually test this out. So I'll save and quit. And we'll restart uh, Nginx. So system control restart Nginx and hit enter. It's going to tell us we have an error here. So I'll just uh, check, check out if we have any potential errors. Um, so within the server name, yeah, I think that's the issue here. We need to use a um, we need to use a uh, we need to use an underscore here. So uh, server name, and I'll quit, and we can then restart the service. And it's always important to restart the service after you've made changes so that you can test them out. So if I now restart, you can see it's going to work because we haven't changed anything. Uh, if we want to see if our new configuration is working and active, we can change, for example, the default port, uh, and we can change that to something like, um, hey, 8080, right? And let's see if that actually registers. So if we uh, write and quit, and we restart the service, uh, we can see that when we re refresh it on port 80, it's not going to work. So we can actually just say port 8080 here. And now that works and uh, the, the web server is currently listening on port 8080. So we know that our configuration is working. I'll just change that back to port 80, right? And uh, we can get started with the basic security configurations that we can work with. So I'll just write and quit and I'll restart the service here. And let's get started with our first vulnerability. Now, as I mentioned with Apache, uh, one of the the main issues is uh, giving giving out too much information, right? And web servers are are notorious for this. Now, when we talk about nginx, if I try and access a directory that I'm not supposed to access, for example, uh, uploads which doesn't exist, I'm just using an example. You can see that it gives us a very interesting banner or a response. It tells us a 404 not found, which isn't interesting. Uh, but a user is able to tell what version of Nginx is running and the host operating system, which is a huge security leak because now the attacker can use this information to target their attacks more efficiently. So we want to get rid of this. Now, the first thing we want to do is we want to go into the configuration file and we want to disable server tokens. Server tokens will just get rid of all uh, you know, information that is passed through the server token. So we just get rid of server tokens. Uh, we can also disable the server signature. Uh, and in this case, the Nginx banner uh, by going right over here before, we can actually add it before the virtual host uh, configs. And uh, we can just add our option right over here. So uh, I'll just go back a step. And we'll add the options here. So the first option we want to add is we want to make sure server tokens is off, which we've already done. We then can specify proxy. Um, we say proxy hide header, right? And that's going to hide the header. And uh, we then disable X powered by. So X powered by. Um, so X powered by. Uh, and we can also disable click jacking attacks uh, by specifying the actual host uh, as the origin. So proxy hide header powered by will disable the signature and then we say add header um, add header we then specify the x frame so x uh, frame add header x frame and the options are going to be the origin so same origin um, uh, we say same origin right over here there we are and we use the semicolon that's very important and that's going to prevent uh, the server or protect us from click jacking attacks. Now, this is very, very basic stuff. Uh, when we set up, uh, you know, mod security, things are going to get much more interesting. Uh, right. OK, so these are just the basic options that we can add here. Now, if we save and we restart the server, so system control restart Nginx, 
and uh, we try and reload this web page you can now see that it only displays nginx it does not display the version number uh, nor does it display the operating system that's being used fantastic uh, we can now take a look at how to configure access right now access is very important so for example we can allow or deny access to various ip addresses so for example if i go to the location right over here uh, I can specify uh, what IP addresses are allowed to access the server. So this is great for administrators who want to protect their, their server from, you know, uh, anonymous access or from access from particular IPs. Uh, so for example, I can say, I can specify allow all, right? Uh, the option allow all, all will allow everyone. If I say deny all, so I can also say deny all, right? And what this will do is it'll prevent anyone from accessing the web server. So if I restart, and I go back into here. Uh, sorry, let me just go back in to make sure that that is configured correctly. So uh, when you talk about, I just want to specify a few options here and make sure that everything uh, makes sense. So when we talk about um, uh, when we talk about access permissions or specifying IPs that uh, you know, uh, specifying who can access what in terms of the resources. Uh, it's very important that you you uh, you ensure that you're not locking yourself out of the web server. So you can specify an IP that you want to deny. In this case, I can say I want to deny my own IP. I can also deny a local host or I can only allow the local host. So that's how you set that up. Now, that's, of course, something that you, you can do if you're interested in doing that. Uh, what I'm uh, particularly interested in demonstrating is how to set up uh, user and password authentication for directories as uh, I had done with Apache. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to save this and we can uh, restart the Nginx service here. And let me just make sure that it's working. There we are. Fantastic. So if we want to protect the var www HTML directory with a username and password a combo, uh, what would we need to do? Well, firstly, we would need to use um, uh, the Apache to util the HD password uh, command. So we say sudo HD password, and then we specify uh, the directory here. So we say um, etc nginx. Uh, and I'll just call it uh, .hd password. So hd password, uh, sorry, that is under pass, uh, hd password like so. And then we specify the user. In this case, we'll just specify the user dev. Hit enter. It's going to ask us to enter the password right over here. And we'll enter the password right over there. It's going to add the password. And if we cat the contents of Etsy, Nginx, and HD password, you can see the user and it, the appropriate hash has been added. Now, to add the uh, authentication to Nginx, it's uh, really very simple. Uh, all that we need to do, first of all, is specify the, uh, the auth options, the auth password, uh, and then specify what directory we want to use the authentication in. So I'll open up the Nginx configuration file and we'll go to the server options which is where we specify um, these the various options uh, regarding the server. So uh, within this, I'll specify the, I'll say auth basic. So the auth basic option, and then uh, I specify the name of the authentication type. So in this case, I can just say development, uh, development team only, just a simple, uh, you know, basic banner regarding the type of authentication or why I need to authenticate. And then I specify the auth um, basic, user file and um, this will uh, I'll just indent everything so it fits correctly or is displayed correctly here so I'll just indent that one more time and we go to the auth basic user file this is the HD password file uh, which again is under the directory etc nginx nginx and we then specify uh, HD password right over here and uh, we'll use the semicolon and also add the semicolon for the message there. And then uh, that will essentially enable the authentication here. Now we need to enable it within the directories that we can, uh, that we currently have created and we can add more than one location if we want. So I'll enable it within var www.html. And to do this, we simply say auth basic and we'll indent and also indent this appropriate here, appropriately right over here and we'll set that to on so we want to enable it and we can write and quit and we can then restart nginx so i'll just restart the nginx service and we can restart that now and as you as you can see it's going to ask me 
uh, to enter username and password. So if I hit an incorrect one, so I can just say, you know, test and one, two, three, hit enter. It's going to tell me that is that authentication failed. And you can see uh, once that is filled, it's going to tell us authentication required. So if I restart again, I can then specify dev and the password here. So hit enter and it's working. I just want to take a moment to thank all our Patreons at patreon.com forward slash hackersploit for all the support. Your support and help is truly appreciated. You keep us making a newer and fresher and better content. Um, so I just want to say thank you to all the Patreons. Um, so thank you, Murph the Surf, Daniel Bork, Jonathan Kyle, Adam Mack, Jamal Guillory, Dafim Bari, Jeremy Nikolai, Mary Hara, Max Chow, Dustin Umpress, Michael Hubbard and Jerry Speds.